Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. This is a super special episode. This is a G4 summit of the crypto world. It has never been done before, and since we have not one but four guests on, a veritable wealth panel, each bringing to the table a different angle to the crypto and blockchain sector. So I'm going to introduce everybody real quickly so we can get into this. Uh, first of all, we have Mr. Tone Vase of ToneVase.com and CryptoScam.com. I want to emphasize Mr. Tone Vase is a market wizard with uncannily accurate uh, market calls in the Bitcoin and crypto world. Mr. Tone Vase, welcome to Looking at the Market, sir. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's, it's uh, an honor and a pleasure to have you on. Uh, we've got Mr. Daniel Amaduri from FutureMoneyTrends.com, which is a must-visit news and information and commentary website in the financial world. In fact, it's the first financial newsletter to cover Bitcoin that I remember, all the way back to when Trace Mayer introduced it to Mr. Amaduri at $13. Uh, Mr. Amaduri, Daniel, welcome to the program, sir. Thanks. And Trace introduced it to me at a dollar. I was a little late to the party, 13 bucks. Ah, okay. You know what? A dollar, $13, it's all good. A lot of people made a lot of money off of that call. Uh, we've got Kenneth. Amaduri from CrushTheStreet.com, who has been covering the crypto market and has made a personal fortune, not just from talking the talk, but from walking the walk. Welcome, Kenneth, to the program, sir. Thank you, David. And uh, I'm honored to be here with uh, a special special group like this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Mr. Lior Gantz, founder of WealthResearchGroup.com, became famous for, among other things, alerting the world to Ethereum before anyone else back in March of 2017 for $12 before it soared over 9,000%. I wish I got in at that price. I'm jealous. Mr. Lior Gantz, welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always great to have you. Uh, so, gentlemen, I'm going to start off with Mr. Tone Vase because I want to know what the charts are currently telling us about the price of Bitcoin. Uh, Mr. Vase, to me, you're the technical analysis expert, so I'd love to hear your take on things. So let me put it to you this way. What's the, what is the downside potential in the short term for Bitcoin, and what's the upside bounce or rebound target, and how are you looking at the current sell-off? Is this a healthy shakeout? Yeah, so uh, lots of changes have taken place in the last 24 hours. Uh, after the big drop down to 4,000 from 6,000, I was a little bit bullish thinking that Bitcoin can recover going back to 5,000, maybe as far as 6,000 before making its ultimate low uh, at best 3,000, but probably even below 2,000. Uh, but we weren't able to hold the 4,000 area over the last couple of days, and we're now back down to the mid 3,800 range. I'm now going uh, bearish uh, even at this point. I mean, Bitcoin was incredibly weak. It couldn't bounce off of the big drop. Now, the big drop from 6,000 was calling for a target of approximately 3,000. Uh, and it looks like we're going to achieve that target. Um, as of today, I'm turning bearish here on Bitcoin once again, uh, earlier than I wanted. And I am looking for the 3000 to $3,200 range to try and bounce the price a little bit. Uh, but I still think we're going to be in a bear market going into next year, and we are going to go below 3000 I'm fairly confident in that. Mm, okay. Now, Tone, you know that one of the biggest concerns that institutional investors have had is the lack of custodian services, which Bakht now solves. Uh, is this a major catalyst? I don't think so. Uh, I, I never understood all the hype around Bakht, even when it first came out. Uh, it came out a few months ago, and um, I thought they were going to do something innovative. They were going to do something creative. I thought they were going to be an actual exchange, uh, not a broker. But I just don't see a difference between Bakht and Coinbase. I don't see a difference between Bakht and Gemini. 
Um, everything I've read about back, I don't see them bringing anything new to the table. Everything that they're doing already exists. So I really don't see a big difference. I don't see what they're going to add. Uh, maybe they'll have a little bit better grasp at the regulatory structure, but just the hype over yet another broker slash exchange that is not doing anything innovative in in trading uh, is just out of control. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see it bringing anything new to the table. If the speculators are bearish, they're bearish. It's not going to change. Uh, if, uh, if a fund wants to buy Bitcoin right now, they have plenty of means to buy the Bitcoin. Uh, I, don't, I don't see BACT changing anything. If BACT wanted to be innovative, they would be kind of like the New York Stock Exchange, where you can't have an account with the New York Stock Exchange. you got to have an account with a broker. And what they're doing is they're just holding that Bitcoin for you, and they don't deal with retail customers. But it looks like BACT's going to deal with retail customers. So they're no different than Gemini or Coinbase or a dozen other exchanges that are doing KYC and are able to deliver the Bitcoin. Interesting. Okay. Now, uh, Daniel Amadori, I want to turn to you next because you've led your subscribers into Bitcoin since the time it was, I stand corrected, not 13. What, was it 13 or $1 per it coin? It is 13. I learned about it from Trace at a dollar. Gotcha. Okay. I stand corrected. But that, it's uncanny either way. Uh, could you take people back to those days and explain how the sector behaved when it was truly in its infancy? And second, can you comment as to what investors should be cautious about when it comes to ICOs? Since I know futuremoneytrends.com readers were warned by you to avoid these altogether, which was a brilliant call since 90% of them have evaporated completely. What can you tell me? You know, I love the idea of Bitcoin, and that's why I haven't done the ICOs. I have done other cryptocurrencies, but I haven't been part of the ICOs because I think the sovereignty and the decentralization of Bitcoin is where I really wanted to focus my energy, and I thought that was where the long-term play was for my newsletter. We're not a day trader or a market timer. Uh, Tone has obviously done an exceptional job doing that, and I would suggest people, if they are interested in trading, to go to his site. Um, I'm very focused on the cryptocurrency and the blockchain space, and I love the big picture for it. And I can tell you, in in uh, in the early days when we profiled it, I'll never forget going to a Bitcoin conference in Las Vegas, and I saw the enthusiasm. And I realized there weren't any investors there. It was all entrepreneurs. It was all tech people. And I really felt like when I left that conference that the next Steve Jobs or Bill Gates was there. And that's why I decided to profile it to our subscribers and stick with it. And I'm so glad we have. And I see so much upside from here. And I'll tell you, I've, I've been to recent conferences. And instead of it being a few hundred of us, uh, it's five, six, seven thousand people. And despite the price volatility, the enthusiasm of the actual people building out the infrastructure to advance blockchain and, and help advance Bitcoin itself a decentralized currency, a store of wealth. Um, I've never seen any other sector like this. And the only thing I can compare it to is the early days of the dot-com uh, boom. And of course, everybody remembers the bursting of the bubble. But I would say that you're probably in 1992, 1993, maybe even earlier, uh, for the blockchain and Bitcoin. And when it comes to the ICOs, I was very negative on them, they, especially in 2017. They were just being pumped out. Everybody wants to ICO everything. Um, we've written a special report that I would urge people to read. It's free. It's futuremoneytrends.com slash ICO. And it's simply my thoughts and a kind of a warning on what it, why I, I did not invest in ICOs and why I just encourage people to be cautious of them. I want people to make money and I want people to really, truly experience uh, the brilliance of of. Bitcoin, and I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist, but I do believe for the most people who know nothing about this sector but want to have exposure, buy Bitcoin. Don't don't try to be sexy or creative. Just focus on the one that truly is revolutionary. Mm, got it. Perhaps that's why they call Bitcoin the mothership, right? Uh, so, uh, from what I understand, that's a f that's a, a report at futuremoneytrends.com forward slash ICO. Is that correct? Yeah, I just put it out, and actually, I've had other ones, but I just recently updated it. So, futuremoneytrends.com slash ICO, and I, I urge you to start there. Okay. 
Uh, I'll put that link in the description below this video. Folks, you can just click on that. I made it easy for you. All right, and to Mr. Lior Gantz of wealthresearchgroup.com. I remember you uh, interviewed, uh, you, you talked about Dash uh, when it was 20 Five dollars, uh, and you spoke with Litecoin founder Charlie Lee when it was at twenty dollars before the sector just erupted. Uh, what I like about your stance is that you told everyone back in 2017 that it's euphoria, it's a bubble. So yeah, ride it, but know when to get out and take general generationally high profits. Uh, now I recently read in your letter how Bitcoin has had several such 80% falls in the past. What's the best way to create alpha, which is to invest in Bitcoin while mitigating risks? Um, I think um, one of the most important things with regards to this entire sector, and I think Tone and I on an interview that I did with him this summer um, talked about this a lot, uh, is the fact that you need to have a perspective on how volatile the sector really is and what it can do over a few days period and over a month period and over a year a yearly period so you don't need to get discouraged when you see major moves up or down even if you miss them on the upside or you uh you suffered from them on the downside remember in the dot-com bubble um or in the dot-com boom and burst Amazon started trading for $18 a share, mm. and by the time that the boom was at its peak, it was $300 a share, and then it went down 95% to $6 a share. And what I want people to understand is the fact that something goes up and down so volatilely doesn't mean that the underlying fundamentals are not good. American Express, American Express, I'm not talking about Bitcoin, but a company that's been around for over 100 years, yeah. in 2008, went from 100 bucks to $10 a share. I'm not, American Express, we're not talking mm. about something that's flaky, right? So there are many, many um, important things to understand here. And one of them, and I think Tone has done a brilliant job of, of uh, talking about this. In fact, I aggregated all of Tone's uncanny accuracy uh, predictions in one report so we so you can check that out because it's unbelievable you really made an art out of it you can go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash tone t-o-n-e and actually see how this guy has predicted again and again what's going on in the market very accurately and I think you'll really appreciate that it's a, it's a great read but you know going back to this not not everything that goes down 95 percent actually comes back so what needs to happen is a combination of fundamentals and pricing so when something goes down significantly what what happens is first of all you can buy more of it with the same fiat dollars so instead of buying one coin with twenty thousand dollars which is what like four or five or six months worth of salaries you can now buy six of them right so ideally you want to buy uh, any asset as cheaply as possible unless the reason it is so cheap is because it's struggling and cannot make a comeback. So the only fear, the only real fear with investments is what's called a permanent loss, where you buy any asset class and the price you paid never comes back. Now, you need to make sure that you understand whether or not you think Bitcoin will come back from its price or not. And all you need to do is understand that there, there have been many such bear markets for Bitcoin. And historically, this is not a uh, rare event. We've seen four or five of these 80 to 90% discounts in the price of Bitcoin over time. And I think what it does is it clears a lot of the people that have bought it for the wrong reasons, and it makes way for people that want to buy it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And there, and, and you know, back that up, what you want to see is fundamentally and improvements to the development of it and you want to see more use cases for it so I think that is really the best way to to think about what's going on right now with Bitcoin now how to mitigate risk is a very important question the one thing that I really think is important and I wrote about 11 strategies on how to mitigate risk at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash bear that's 11 ways that I personally use in every asset class that I've bought over the last 18 years 
since I started investing at the age of 16. And I think I can go over with you just two or three of them because I know we're short on time. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the most important things is to always buy speculative assets only after they make a 50% price reduction. Mm -hmm. So with any asset class that is very volatile, you need to always make sure that you only buy after a major price reduction. It doesn't matter if it's a small cap stock or Bitcoin. Secondly, you want to make sure that the fundamentals are still intact. So n not only is it cheap, but you want to make sure that it's hated. So you want to make sure there's a lot of bad sentiment towards it because if there's a lot of bad sentiment towards it, two things happen. One thing is the management company or in this case the developers are working extra hard to change the case. So when something is hated, that's the best time to look at it. Think of a husband and wife that they're having a fight hmm. and she hates him. What's the first thing he's going to want to do? He's going to want to over deliver and compensate. Hmm. So you bet your ass that Bitcoin developers are working very hard right now. I know Tony agrees with me on that one. See that smirk. Hmm. So and the last thing you want is an upside, an uptrend. So you want to wait until you see some confirmation that the worst is behind you. It, it's better to be too late than too early on these things because you might end up buying something that goes another 50% down. As Tone says, right now it's about 30 to 3800 If it goes down to 2000 bucks, that's a 50% drop from the price that you pay. So you want to wait for a little bit of confirmation, a little bit of upside. That's my 3-0 right there. So cheap, very hated, so the, the development team works extra hard and is after the hurdle so it's already carved the bottom working on an upside and uh, lastly if I if I have a uh, just a uh, 20 more seconds mm -hmm. I'd say this David um, I, I, I would love for people to understand the importance of position sizing position sizing is the best way to compensate and, to, uh, and be humble so you you can never know any ev anything and everything about an asset class especially if you're a part-time investor if you take a smaller position and you make money nobody's ever died from small profits so instead of you know becoming very aggressive and risking a lot especially your mentality you're gonna leave a lot of residue in there and you're not gonna be able to take risks in the future when time comes to take risks you're gonna be indifferent to opportunities and that's just something that's gonna curtail your career going forward so if you're young like you know all of us are on this call the, the last thing you want is any catastrophic risks in your career that, that makes your hands shiver before your next opportunity comes along. So, But you can check out all the 11 at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash bear um, and give you back the floor. Yeah, and I'm going to put those links in the description below this video. People should check out those reports, wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash tone, T-O-N-E, as well as wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash bear, B-E-A-R. Plenty of strategies there. All right. And uh, you've been very, Kenneth, you've been very patient. All right. Uh, Kenny, <laughs> Crush the Street is one of the leading YouTube channels on cryptocurrencies. Uh, if someone hasn't followed anything about cryptocurrencies thus far, doesn't have an exchange account, a wallet or anything like that, what is your best advice for that person? Uh, and could you lay out maybe a, a quick step-by-step -step plan for someone to go from rookie to expert? Sure. Um, man, big sea of red out there right now looking at coin market cap. <laughs> well, it's an honor to be a part of this roundtable. And Tone, I, I say this with a great deal of respect. Congrats on making technical analysis interesting and pertinent. I think it's uh, obviously a tribute to your accuracy and precision. Uh, and one thing I would say that Lior mentioned is it's very disingenuous when people say they don't care about the price of Bitcoin. They don't care about the assets or the what they're buying at any price. Don't care that they bought at 20,000. And he made the point for the exact reason why. If you have the money, you can buy Bitcoin now at sub $4,000. And that's a lot better than spending money at $20,000 Bitcoin. And so gigantic fortunes were made because of price and massive bankruptcies are gonna happen. And we're seeing that now because of price. And I think that the bear market will prolong because of price. So when you hear that price doesn't matter, absolutely, price does matter. And so if you don't know anything about Bitcoin, I think now is a really strategic time 
to be looking at it. And I have three major steps that I want to encourage people to look at. Number one, educate yourself. Crypto is multifaceted and nuanced. And when you look down at coinmarketcap.com, you see a bunch of different cryptos. And I tell you, they're, they're not all competitors and variations of Bitcoin. Many are scams and are going to zero. And there's a lot of different use cases out there, some good and some whatever. Some are privacy, some are data tokens, title and registration. So many different facets and nuances on in the crypto space. And I think this is really important for people to understand, especially if you're just getting introduced to it. Figure out what it is that you want to understand about this market and go with it because it's huge. And do you want to buy and hold? Do you want to trade with a guy like Tone? Do you want to get involved with the sector and make maybe a half million dollars a year as a programmer? I mean, these are all things that you need to consider. So step one, find your groove. Number two, hands to the plow. You actually need to open up a wallet. You need to get out there. You need to do it. And we definitely have a report for that. If you want to learn how to do that, uh, you need to go to crushthestreet.com forward slash Bitcoin 2019. And this is going to be for people who are brand new to the space and also for people who need a pep talk, who've been in the space, who've had the market steamroll them. So this is very important. And it's a brand new report. And I encourage people to go there. Um, hands to the plow right you know being in the battlefield is the best lesson of all and experiencing the bull market while bullets and bombs are going by your head i mean that's the real experience the psychology of the market and that's something we really covered a lot at crushthestreet.com and so you know were you buying bitcoin you know when it was going up a thousand dollars a day i mean this is you know, a battlefield moment, the psychology that you would have had to deal with. Did you forget about it? Did you ignore it when it was 2015 and, you know, we were in the 200 or $300 range? I mean, these are all things. And I would encourage people to see what's happening right now during the bear market. Um, you know, people were not forecasting, you know, that we would be in this that, this bad. I mean, tone. But people don't really understand you know, in the hype of the bull market, how bad things can really get. And Bitcoin between 6,000 and 7,000 from August to November, everyone was put at ease. Everyone was fine with those prices. We finally bottomed for Bitcoin to fall basically to $3,000. And what a blow that was for people who you know, were invested. I mean, that's a psychological thing that we could probably talk about for decades and years to come. So, I mean, this is really important. And I, I encourage people to, to get started and put the hands to the plow, put your hands to the plow. And uh, number three, I, I'd actually, uh, it's slightly biased to the upside with Bitcoin as a whole. I mean, I think we could go down and up from here. I'm not going to call a bottom, but uh, I'm very bullish long term with the Bitcoin price. Ultimately, we are far from saturation. I believe as soon as the world at large really starts to implement it and big money starts to come in, ultimately that will be what takes Bitcoin to $50,000 and $100,000. And that's where my focus is. Now, it's going to be a hard road to get there. And even after we bottom, keep this in mind, it's going to feel like a bear market for a while because say we bottom at $3,000 it goes to 6,000, everyone's believing in a bull market, then the market washes and rinses investors by taking everyone down to 4,000 and really slamming everybody once again. And that's what happens. So if you really want my strategy, my pep talk, my how I plan on really digging my heels in to this, this amazing currency here, the sound money vehicle, go to crushthestreet.com forward slash Bitcoin 2019. Definitely going to check that out. I recommend everybody watching this do the same. That's crushthestreet.com forward slash Bitcoin 2019 for a complete guide on Bitcoin and gaining that expertise so you can navigate these markets. All right, Tone Vase, we're going to circle back to you, sir. I know you had talked sure. about, yeah, appreciate it. Uh, I know you talked about your lack of interest in other cryptocurrencies. What makes Bitcoin what I call the mothership, but what makes it so special in your view? 
Sure. And it's the, really the fundamentals. I run into this problem all the time. I've been a big bear of the price of Bitcoin since, I believe, January 10th. I went back through my videos, found the day that I went bearish on Bitcoin. And it was around January 10th. And there was you know, about a week in early February when we bounced strong off of a $6,000 low when I was a little bit bullish. And then the only time I've been bullish is actually recently, like last week or two, I've been bullish and now that's coming to an end. So I've been a bear about 95% of the time this entire year. And the big criticism that I was getting from people is, Tone, you don't understand the fundamentals, which I found borderline laughable because I've been living and breathing this space since 2013. Um, I quit my job in 2015. All I do all day, every day is Bitcoin. And yet people that have a day job seem to think they have a better understanding of Bitcoin's fundamentals than I do. Um, also, a lot of these people confuse fundamentals with news events, like people getting scared because Tether might not be backed and they panic out of Tether and into Bitcoin. They see that as a fundamental event. It's not. It's a fear-driven news event. And... Um, so there's a big difference between fundamentals and news events. And uh, fundamentals of Bitcoin are simple. It's the underlying code. It's the fact how is uh, Schnorr signatures uh, uh, going to get in through a soft fork. It's the how is Lightning Network uh, being built out for scalability. Uh, what's going on with the latest on privacy? Uh, what's going on with uh, the latest of you know, actual uses of Bitcoin and potentially institutional investors investing in Bitcoin, which I believe right now, they're really not. Most of them are actually exiting Bitcoin, as we see with Mike Novogratz and uh, many other notable uh, situations. So my fundamentals a grasp on Bitcoin is very, very solid, um, along with the fact that people misunderstood the concept that the price of Bitcoin can fall below the mining cost of production. I think that people grossly overestimate um, how much it costs to mine a Bitcoin. I think it is even lower than now. I think miners are still profitable and people thought it was $8,000 and then they thought it was $6,000 and now they're saying $4,000. Um, no one really knows, they're just guessing. And, and, and even if uh, mining a Bitcoin is $4,000, it still, it does not mean we can't fall to $1,000. I've heard this nonsense about gold for a dozen years. Gold can't mm. fall below $1,000, It's gold or silver can't fall below 15 bucks, it's below the cost of production. Well, guess what? We've been below 15 bucks for about six years, right? Like, it, it doesn't mean that it can't happen. So people have to, uh, like, take these things out of their mind, and this is where technical analysis can help, uh, because the fear and FOMO of the crowd uh, can take it in any direction. Now, I always circle back to the stock market and, and the NASDAQ, and you guys nailed it when, when you said it earlier. Uh, the NASDAQ had a $5,000 financial peak in 2000. Anyone here on the panel uh, knows uh, in what year NASDAQ broke 5,000 points again to recapture financial all-time highs? I think it was either 2016 or 2015, maybe? Yeah. It was like it was like late 2015, and if you inflation adjust that, um, I think it was just recently last year, right? And what happened to the internet during that time? The internet was being used more and more and more every single day for 16 years, but financially it didn't recover. So I see the same thing happening. And uh, go back to all of these old coins; none of them are solid fundamentally. They're all pure nonsense. To me, Bitcoin is an investment grade asset. To me, Bitcoin is like uh, is is more similar to a stock in the Dow Jones, and the chances of that stock going to zero in the Dow Jones is like once in a hundred year event. And I equate all other cryptos and especially ICOs more equivalent to penny stocks. And when someone tries to sell me an old coin or tries to sell me an ICO, here's what I hear, dude. I hear this great company. They're doing amazing things. They are gonna take down Google. They are better than Google. They will take them down. I'm like, great, how much is the stock worth? Well, right now it's trading on a pink sheet. It's about half a cent, but, but they got the people. They got the model. They're going to they're gonna destroy Google, but the market has decided that right now they're worth 0.5 cents. Um, that's pretty much what I hear whenever I hear of an old coin, and I don't touch any of them. 
I stick to Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin, even if you're a long-term investor, you can diversify your portfolio. It's an uncorrelated asset. It's the only asset that is unconfiscatable in the for, for the first time in human history. Um, a human can own something that is unconfiscatable. Uh, that, uh, that feature, that aspect has never existed before and people haven't comprehended it. It can be used as censorship resistant value transfer and it potentially could be a new monetary policy that is uh, harder than gold if you've read Saifedean's The Bitcoin Standard, which I really recommend. So I think Bitcoin's fundamentals are very solid, but it went way too high. I mean, whenever an asset you know, gets overbought, it has to overcorrect to the downside. I think the fair value of a Bitcoin at today is about four or five thousand. But because we went all the way to 20, I wouldn't be surprised if we go down to 1500 before we recover back to that uh, normal price range of five or six and then slowly go up from there. Wow. OK, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. I'm going to go around one at a time and I want to find out where we can get more information about you and what you have to offer. We'll start with Mr. Kenneth Amadori. Where can we get more information, sir? Oh, I can't hear you, Kenneth. Uh-oh, Kenneth, we cannot hear you. Hey, sorry about that. There we go. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone on the panel, and uh, thank you, David, for hosting this. If people want more information about me or what I do, uh, the content that I produce, visit me at crushthestreet.com. It's an open book, and we got a great team of contributors there that you know really work to cover alternative assets. That's what Bitcoin was. It was birthed out of the alternative media. When the conventional news was covering Bitcoin, it was $15,000. Now, uh, we covered it way before that. And there's a lot of success stories at Crush the Street because of the coverage that we've had on cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin. So I'm very proud of that. If you want to join us, we have a lot of fun at crushthestreet.com. Sign up for our free newsletter. And also don't forget, folks, crushthestreet.com forward slash Bitcoin 2019 for that report on Bitcoin. Uh, we're going to go over to Daniel Amadori. Where can we get more information on what you have to offer? Uh, futuremoneytrends.com, uh, specifically if you're interested in crypto, futuremoneytrends.com slash ICO. And I would just tell everybody who's investing. One thing I've learned from investments in life, just as bad as it can be, it can be just as good a short time later and I would just go the opposite think about the euphoric state we were in in November of 2017 how great it was I mean I spoke to people at a conference in January of 2018 this year uh, you know plumbers and construction workers quitting their jobs to become full-time crypto traders just as good as it felt it might feel equally as bad but uh, look I don't know where the bottom is or how long this is gonna last but fundamentally probably stronger than ever uh, and, you know, we're obviously near a bottom at some point in the next year because it is starting to feel equally as horrible, as good as it felt in November of 2017. Mm, got it. Okay. So, again, that report, uh, I believe you mentioned that was uh, futuremoneytrends.com forward slash ICO. People need to yes. check that out. All these will be, you can just go ahead and click on it in the uh, text link in the description below this video. Mr. Lior. Gantz, uh, please tell us where we can get more information, please. Best way is to go to wealthresearchgroup.com. And when you go in the top menu, you'll see a button that says special reports. It's basically a wealth library where we aggregated about 16 years worth of work uh, in PDF reports. Great for a download uh, and a weekend read. And uh, I think that's the best way. If you want, <clears throat> basically, uh, Wealth History Group is a, is a labor of love, and um, it's my way of transferring my own analysis and my entrepreneurship uh, uh, ideas and investment uh, research to you. So the best way to do it is to sign up, obviously, for the newsletter, because that's where we publish our most up-to-date reports and the top-notch uh, events in the world and what's going on right now, and that's the best way to, to, to follow everything that's going on. Got it. And the reports mentioned today were wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash tone, T-O-N-E, as well as wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash bear, B-E-A-R. And last but never least, Mr. Tone Vase, uh, please tell us where we can get more information about you and what you do. 
Yeah, hey, guys, thanks for putting the report on me. I actually did not know that. I didn't know that you guys did that until like just now. I have to go and check it out. But uh, sure, so I am pretty much all over uh, as Tonevase, Tonevase YouTube channel, where I try to bring the update on the price of Bitcoin daily, just using technical analysis. Uh, used to do like daily news shows and weekly law shows. Just been uh, traveling through crazy time zones currently in New Zealand. I've been on the road for over three months now. Still have a few more countries to visit. Uh, I'll come back through the U.S. for a few weeks in uh, mid-December. Uh, but other than that, check me out on Twitter, Tone Vase, YouTube Tone Vase. And in January, I'm putting together my very first conference. It's called Unconfiscatable. I absolutely love that word. I was using it so much. And then I realized, wow, the domain's available, uh, the branding's available, uh, because it was never a real word. And, and, and that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. The word unconfiscatable still does not exist in the dictionary. And I think uh, Bitcoin is going to change that. I'm trying to change it. Uh, so if you are uh, in Vegas or interested in a Bitcoin focused event, none of this blockchain stuff uh, is just straight up mm -hmm. Bitcoin and why it's important. Uh, come out to Las Vegas at the end of January, January 24th to 26th. Uh, got a, a casino organized celebrity poker game going. And um, it'll be a great event. Say Fadina Moose of the Bitcoin Standard is speaking. Max Kaiser is speaking. Uh, a bunch of financial analysts like Willie Wu and uh, Tyler Jenks. Uh, it's going to be great. Trace Mayer uh, and some developers, Jimmy Song and Peter Todd, uh, working on a few others. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what I'm working on now. And uh, once I get back to the America's time zone, as of tomorrow, I'm off to Chile to speak at La BitConf. Uh, you can find me there. And then I'll make my way back to the U.S. eventually. Love it. Unconfiscatable. That's a great word. I'm surprised it doesn't exist yet. Awesome. Uh, thank you to everybody. And just real quick, uh, I'd like to mention, this is important, folks. Uh, security tokens have become the hottest topic in the world in blockchain right now. And this is something you have to stay on top of. Uh, so I'm going to mention one more report, uh, Kenny, with, uh, with your permission from Crush the Street. Uh, this is the best report on the subject of security tokens that I've seen. It's at crushthestreet.com forward slash safe, S-A-F-E. That's crushthestreet.com forward slash safe. Check that out and check out everything that these four gentlemen today have to offer. There's so much information out there. Uh, we're going to keep bringing you all the good stuff here at Looking at the Markets. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Tone, thanks for giving us a reason to go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, come out. Uh, let me know. Uh, the poker registrations are currently closed, but uh, because we were selling out too fast, but I can get you, definitely get you guys in. So uh, hit me up, uh, DM me. If there's a cannabis tournament, let me know. I'll, I'll kick it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. From all of us here at Looking at the Markets, we'll see you again. Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody.